Hey guys, Cloud Wolf here, and I'm back today with a very requested video by a couple different people that are regulars on my channel. Um, I think he goes by Sir Vonderhelm or something like that. Uh, I can't really pronounce it too well. But this is the structure block tutorial, and in a couple days here, I will have top 10 structure block tips that, uh, with a bunch of structure block tips that I found and secret tricks you can do to make your structure block files look more professional and do things that uh, you, you might not have thought was possible with structure blocks. Um, but anyways, just getting started, If you, this is for if you don't really know how to use structure blocks or maybe if you don't know entirely how to use them, because there's a couple different features to them that are pretty cool. So first off, what you want to do is you want to do slash give at p structure, like that, structure underscore block, okay? And I cannot type an underscore, underscore block. And it'll give you a structure block like that. That's the only way to get it. So you place it down and you have to know the different modes. So data is not too useful. Um, doesn't really do much. It just tell it's a marker. So there's not much to be said about that um, unless you need to know the data in the chunk, but that's not very important. So the important ones is save, load, and corner. Corner is just a quick way to do stuff and save and load are the main functions. So we're going to go over save first. So save, you put your structure name. So what do you want to save the structure as? So maybe I build, let's build a house here. And done. Okay, so I just got done building probably the coolest house in the world. <laughs> this thing is beautiful. I mean, look at it. It even has windows and such space, you know? I mean, I could fit everything in here. Um, but regardless of what your structure is, you're going to get the command block, right? Your, I mean, the structure block, and you're going to put it in the corner of your build. And you want to find the positive corner, so hit F3, or whatever function it is to, um, so that you use to observe things. And this is where you're going to be using the, the little markers. Just let me see real quick. There we go. This is positive, this is positive. Okay, so you wanna make the marker, you see this marker in the middle of my screen. Uh, you wanna make it so that the green one's going up, the red one is pointing outwards, and the blue one is pointing to the right. Then you're gonna go in the leftmost corner. Um, to put it simple, you want the two uh, blue and red to basically be in the corner of your build so that they highlight your build like so. Um, or you can just look at your uh, coordinates and see this one's going up and this one's going up. So the command block needs to be here. So that's the easiest way to do it. You don't have to make sure that it's in the positive corner, um, but it's just going to make things a lot easier. So then you got to find out uh, what you want to name the structure. So you're going to go over to low, save right here, save mode, and name it um, my house or whatever name you want. My, what I like to do is my username and then an underscore, but that is for the other video. Anyway, so my house, then you want to find the relative position. Usually you want to use zero for the relative position, um, but that will include the save block. So you might want to go with uh, one to the left and one to the right. Then you want to go with the structure size, figure out how big it is. Okay, so this one is one, two, three, four, five blocks this way. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six and want five blocks that six blocks this way because you have to include the lip okay so you could just guess or you can actually get the numbers but i'm just gonna put six and i'm gonna put seven and um, you can see that it's almost there so this box is going to tell you what it's going to save um so i think i can actually take off this one oh this one and you could just adjust the commands until it's in the square so i need seven on this i believe Yes, there we go. So we have the whole thing in it, and it's, and you can adjust it however you want. Um, this is mainly just a tutorial on how to do the basics of them. So then you want to either, first you have to see uh, the text size and structure. You can click that, and it says unable to determine size and structure, add corners. That is what we'll go over later, so ignore this button. Um, show invisible blocks. You can turn it on if you want to see invisible blocks. These are blocks where um, if you have, like... If I build like a weird thing here and I put the structure over it, these blocks will cover it. So it won't, it will go inside it. Okay. So if you want to, instead of, because it won't look natural, it'll take this big square, cut out the square from your land, and put it in. So I'll show you what I mean in a moment here. Um, you want to be careful clicking the show invisible blocks because it can lag you really bad if it's a big structure. So I'm going to turn it off. Um, then also include entities that I always click it on, but there may be a reason to not click it on for some reason. 
Um, but what this will do is if I put like a villager in my house, it'll clone not only the blocks, but also the villager, which makes this a little better than the clone command in some respects. So then you're going to click save when you're done, and it'll tell you structure saved is my house. Then you're going to take your structure block, and I'm going to do this purposefully in the ground so you can see what I mean. Um, and I'm going to place it, go over to load, and I'm going to do my house, the same name goes here. Then relative position, I always put zero, so it's not above the structure block, it's right where I want it. And then you click load. So you can see, you can fly up, you can see the square that it's going to go around, and that square is going to move over here. And uh, my villager friend is outside the house. Um, anyway, uh, so you can also rotate it. So I can rotate it 90 degrees, and it's kind of hard to tell where things are. That's what the green line is for. So you can go over here, see the green line. Imagine I rotated it 90, the green line is still there. So that means that this thing went... Whoosh. So the house, the door, from here, the door is going to be right here. And uh, the back is going to be over there. So you can rotate it 90. You can rotate it 180, uh, which we'll do it like that. And we'll just go over the different modes. So I'm going to put up one anyway. And we'll, I'll show you what the different ones are. So we're going to go like that. And you click load again. Once you see the lines, you click load again uh, to load it uh, like with to load the structure. Or you can power it with a button or a command block. Um, but as you can see, it cut out this hole in the ground. And it loaded the structure just the way it was. Okay. And it didn't save the villager because the villager is not in the house when I saved it, which is kind of sad. Oh, wait, no, you also have to click Include Entities, sorry. You have to click Include Entities on your load. Now it'll load him in there. There we go. Okay, so now let's just see what the 90 degree would look like for reference. So you can see that it rotated the structure from here, 90 degrees. And here we have our villager friend in there. Um... I think an overview would be a little better. So it went from going this way, and it rotated it to this way, just like that, rotated it that way. And um, we're going to have to move this over, but you can see what 180 will do. It'll basically rotate it again, so it's this way. And 270 will rotate it yeah, again, so it's this way. Um, now, this may get a little confusing, because the rotations is hard to imagine in your head. Uh, for most people, but I'm kind of used to it because uh, certain math classes, but uh, you'll get used to it and just try different things. So um, the next one that is a notable feature is the this one. So this mirrors it perfectly, right? The dot dot means that it's going to copy and it's going to copy it, right? Now, if you click it, this will flip it. So you'll see what I mean. So what it does is it swaps from loading the building like this so it moves where the green line is so then right now the green line is here and the building is that way now the green line is here and the building is that way so you'll see that it's the opposite um starting angle so they're both the same uh they're both the same build but you can see where now instead of the structure block being in the right corner it's in the left corner so that's what that will do and then another one is up v which will basically just swap it it will what it'll do is it'll do this thing the um like the flip position and it'll rotate it like 100 and it'll, it'll rotate it like 180 so instead of the command block being in the back right corner it's in the front right corner and you'll see that illustrated right here and it flips it as well it rotates it so it's completely flipped in a 180 circle so it's the same as doing this one which is the 180 flip it's the same as clicking here and picking 180, um, but it's just a quicker way to do it. And that's all there is for load. Hope this didn't confuse you too much. Uh, it is a very confusing thing to do, but uh, once you get used to it, it is really useful. Now, the last thing about the load part is the structure integrity, and this is basically how full you want the structure to be. 1.0 will clone it perfectly, but if I do 0.5, only half of all the blocks are going to clone and it'll pick randomly. So if I pick load and I pick load again, the house is like destroyed. And this is useful for some other things that I'll be showing off later. Um, but it's not really useful. It's useful for maybe if you want to make a destroyed house. Uh, if you click load again, you can notice that the house actually slowly begins to, through random chance, create itself again. Um, and I think now it's pretty much whole. Let's see. Yeah, that's completely full. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to the structural integrity. This is the seed. Um, I'm not sh exactly 100% sure what to do with that, but I don't know when you would use it. Uh, and the last part of this tutorial is corner blocks. So instead of having to have these coordinates and get this all nice, you can hit done and you can change. You go to save 
and you find, you put this in the bottom left corner, now you gotta find the next top right corner, okay? And you put a structure block in the top right corner, and you change it to a corner block like that, and you title it the same name. So my house. So then you click here and you click detect. And it found from the upwards diagonal of this block. So like, here's your structure block, right? It detects from this block right here, like diagonally up to where the corner block is like that. And it'll go diagonally down. So you want to adjust it correctly because right now that's not all the structure I need. So I'm going to have to actually move this structure block out, make it a corner, call it, uh, my house and this I feel like um, is a little bit less useful but I mean I guess it's pretty quick if you're got the hang of it so my house and then click detect you know we got pretty much the whole structure except for the edges but I'm not gonna mess with that too much uh, that's pretty much all there is for this tutorial guys um, now we the next thing we got to go over is how to install the uh, different structure files so I'll be back so now we're in our percent app data percent and I will have a couple of things blurbed out uh, so you don't see it. But you want to go to your dot minecraft and ignore all these other files that I have. Um, go to dot minecraft and then you want to go into your saves. So this is for extracting this file that you just saved. And uh, ignore all the names of these files because some of them are um, special. Anyway, um, the world that I was in was named one command. So go into one command. So then you got to go to structures. And these are all your structures. Uh, we have my house, crystal limiter, D, that's probably just random. Um, so my house, and now you can copy, hit control, and copy it to your desktop, upload it however you want. But that's your file that people can download, so that's really cool. Um, in addition, if you want to download a file, you have to get the file. So I'll just take this one, for example. Um, and then you want to find your world that you want to put it into. So I can go to like the Save This Community, you got to right click, oh, Saves Community already has it. We'll go into this one, which is a 60 minute map I made. Right click, go to new, go to folder, and create a new folder named structures, like that with an S. Then you click and drag all your files that you want to put in there into the structures and it will load uh, just fine. So that's pretty much all there is to the tutorial, guys. Um, if you found this useful, leave a like or something or put something in the comments about what I got wrong or what I need to fix. Um, but other than that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later.